so it's been a while since I uh, made a video for YouTube, but uh, it hasn't been because I've been dead or idle or anything. I just haven't bothered to put anything on YouTube for about a year. Um, but I had a couple of digital oscillator techniques I wanted to, you know, demo real quick. The first is sort of a direct digital synthesis, uh, numerically controlled oscillator, where basically the processor is just writing, you know, whatever it, it has to the DAC, and it's just totally digital, and the only analog part is the output of the DAC. So I'll just demo that real quick. Uh, So it sounds kind of sawtoothy, not particularly great, and it's uh, a little bit out of pitch. That was supposed to be a major scale. Um, part of the reason it's out of pitch is because there's a trade-off with this type of oscillator. Um, it uses an exponential uh, lookup table to implement the exponential function because the, you know the, the notes as you hear them on the keyboard are sort of in an exponential function. And uh, the larger the values that are in that lookup table, the more accurate your frequency is going to be. But also the larger values that are in the table, the larger your step size is going to be on your ramp, on your sawtooth. So uh, the step size is sort of how the, you know, it looks like a stair step there. The step size would, in this case would be the vertical height of those little stair step things. So, uh, and then the other limitation, of course, is just a sampling rate. This is running the SPI out to the DAC at 12 megahertz, and the DAC requires 24 bits to uh, implement a sample. So that uh, reduces your sampling rate to 500 megahertz or kilohertz right there. And then if you want to implement more than one output, say if you want a six voice polysynth, you know, you've got a 500 uh, kilohertz divided by six. I don't know, that's like, a, 90 kilohertz or something like that and then your effective sampling rate is is a lot lower than that so it's really hard to get something that's fast enough uh, to implement like a polysense with this type of oscillator so uh, that's an NCO just kind of a you know neat little Sounds okay, kind of fun. Okay, so the other uh, oscillator technique I was going to talk about, and the real reason I'm doing this video, is a DCO, which is, you know, uh, what was used in some famous polysynths of the 1980s, like the Roland Juno series. Um, and basically, the concept there is uh, the microcontroller sends some data to a DAC, and uh, that goes to an analog integrator, and that ramps down. And then at a certain point later, you send a pulse and that uh, uh, turns on a transistor switch and that resets the integrator and then really quickly the transistor switch turns back off and it starts to ramp again and uh, the idea is the faster your ramp rate the faster you're going to send pulses so you get sort of a an even amplitude over your frequency range of your oscillator so uh, here's what it looks like it's pretty clean None of the stair steppy stuff as with the NCO. So there's really no sampling rate involved here. In a sense, it's, I guess it is a totally analog signal path. And uh, the complaint everybody has with these is, you know, of course there's digital control of the pitch, so you don't get, you know, a totally, you know, somewhat random and, and uh, smooth uh, control of frequency like you would with a voltage controlled oscillator but uh, I don't know to demo it I've got uh, two DCOs going so there's MIDI coming in to the microcontroller and the microcontroller is sending out a couple well it's just sending out one stream of SPI to this DAC which is sending out uh, a couple voltages and that goes to two copies of that little analog circuit that uh, we just saw and uh, those get mixed together and uh, right now I've got two DCOs that are slightly detuned, so uh, this is the actual signal we're going to hear. It's kind of two oscillators kind of beating together against each other to kind of give it a fat analog-esque sound. I guess it is analog in a sense, but uh, here's what that sounds like. Let's make sure it's 
recording here real quick. Good thing because it wasn't. Alright. So I'll hook up the audio here. So it's pretty analog. The reason that it cut out at that high note there was I just haven't programmed that in, that octave in yet. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I've got a, a uh, variable here for uh, detuning the second oscillator. And uh, I'll change that so that we'll hear some, some sevenths going on. Let me compile it real quick. Compiled. This is Kukox, by the way. And I'll program it to the chip. And this will change, I don't know, sort of the beat frequency. Still some bugs to work out, for sure. Um, I'll do an octave here. But I'm sure I'll work the bugs out. I just had some time and wanted to take a video of it real quick. So here's an octave. So the oscillator two is an octave up. <laughs> like when I made it octaves it's still kind of a little bit off in frequency which is cool because uh, you know you kind of want that sort of phasey beating sound so it sounds kind of analog but uh, yeah I don't know uh, but that's DCOs and I really like the way they sound so far and it's kind of the beginning of a, a little poly synth that maybe I'll post some videos later on uh, but anyways Thanks for looking.